here is the box that I received. And um, I actually ordered this one uh, from Amazon. And um, I don't remember exactly how much I paid for it, but let's just say for sure that it was less than what the MSRP was, which I think is $88 for this particular model. And um, I have to say that that was a pretty good price. So let's go ahead and uh, pull it out of the box here. It's a lifting style box. All right. I'm trying to do this all with one hand here so we can all see exactly what we have. All right. So here we go. So we have the, uh, of course, the quick start guide. And let's pull the actual switch out. This is not so simple with just a single hand here. Probably should, should have tripoded the, uh, the video camera. Alright. And there she is. Very small, as you can see, there's, there's my hand. So it's, you know, it's just your normal desktop switch, essentially, as far as the size goes. So nothing too massive. Has the 48-volt uh, DC plug and the uh, reset on the back. Lots of nice venting along the back and sides. Um, all the sides, except for the front, obviously, where the ports are. And let's go to the front here, see if we can get some focus going. There we go. There's our PoE out ports, ports number 5 through 8. And on the top here are those indicator LED LEDs that they talked about in the manual, the quick start guide, and again the description of what each of those actually means. So that's really nice. Uh, it's a nice uh, you know, metal casing, uh, no plastic here on, on it, e even the front part is all metal, which is really nice. It's, it's good to see in an age where we have a way too much plastic and not enough, uh, you know, lasting product uh, pieces. So really nice to see an all metal constructed piece. Um, so let's go ahead and now get this connected up and see if we can get some uh, power going and see if we can power the Wi-Fi and also the one of the Cisco phones that I have. Okay, so here we are uh, out in my living room. And uh, I have my Cisco phone here on the left, the Ubiquiti Wi-Fi access point, the legacy one that I was speaking of earlier, and then I have the Unify, and I have it plugged into the power already. And we can see that that's actually powered on by this little LED light right here. So that's nice. has a nice little indicator of when that's powered on. So the first thing I want to do is I want to test my Wi-Fi access point. So grab the cable here and we're going to go ahead and uh, plug in to port number eight. And yes, no, maybe. I found out some hard truth here and that is that my legacy ubiquity access point is not the right um, kind of PoE uh, for this particular PoE switch. So, not a problem. I had, like I said, I had planned to upgrade this anyway. Um, so, I guess now is as good a time as any to upgrade this one uh, so that it will fit with this. Until then, I'll have to keep using the wall wart for my access point. But uh, let's go ahead and try out the Cisco phone. Now, we'll plug it in here and see what happens. Alright, well we have a PoE light. That's a really good sign. And let's see if we get some link sign. Oh, and there is a link sign. And we are on 10100. And uh, this is a 100 megabit uh, phone. It's the SPA504G. So it is only a 100 megabit, I believe. So, looks like we have that part happening and working just fine. 
Uh, next part is going to be to go ahead and connect this up to my router. And then we're going to go jump into the cloud and see what this thing looks like. I've connected all the switch up to the router and all of that is set to go. And this one goes to the PC. And we'll flip it over. Ah, look at that. We have magic lights. That's what we like to see. All lit up and we'll just watch the sequence here. Cisco, that's always a good sign. <clears throat> Initializing network. And connecting DNS. Oh, look at that. EIT main. And it looks like we got some voicemail. So I better get to answering some phones. Been kind of away for the day. But uh there you have it. The phone is all set up and connected, ready to go. Uh, let's make sure we actually have a dial tone. Hey, sounds good to me. All right. Well, that that is that for the phone. Let's uh, get over back over to the desktop and see about the cloud setup and how we can manage and monitor that sw that managed switch. Okay, here we are back at the desktop and. You can see here that in the corner that I have just a Unify icon, and that is for the Unify controller. So we're going to go ahead and double click that, and it should open up a web page. Now it's going to start the controller first in the other window. I'll pull that window over here so you can see what it's doing. There we go. So it's starting the Unify controller. Just wait till it's done. Yada yada yada. Okay, and I'm running 5.5.20, which is the most updated version. It just came out on 731. So now we'll launch browser to manage that. And we're gonna get a privacy error because this is a self-signed certificate. Because uh, this is on this local machine. So we'll go ahead and accept the responsibilities. And I'm setting up this new one uh, from scratch so I can show you adding the Wi-Fi access point as well as the switch into this uh, setup. Now, let's hope that I can remember the username and password that I set all the way back then. Oh, well, that's good. For, we're on that. Okay, Unify access point required. Please connect at least one Unify access point to enable the channel occupancy chart. Okay, so you can see here we have a nice little dashboard with a bunch of things all over the place. And you can see that it actually detects that there are two devices. One that is pending adoption down here, and then another one that is a WLAN. So we have that set up as well. So let's... Um, we can go here and we can actually see the devices. And it looks like it's actually doing an upgrade of the device, which is good. So we'll let that finish. So the Wi-Fi right now is gonna be down slightly. So let's see what we got, gateway switch. Okay, so here we are now. Um, and the other way you can get to this is over here on the left-hand side, there's a devices. We would just click that and it would bring us to the same page and we can click all so we can see all of them. So there we can see our switch and the IP address that it was given on the network, which we'll probably change that <clears throat> to something that is more conducive to what we have set up in other parts of the network, probably in the same two, three something range. Okay, so it looks like it's just waiting. It says pending adoption. So basically what happens in the Unify Cloud is, um, or the controller, is that you adopt things into this controller's domain, so to speak. So what we'll do is we'll go over here to the right, and you'll see there are a couple of actions, adopt and upgrade. So it looks like we there might be an upgrade as well for this. So there's probably a firmware upgrade, which is good for us. We can upgrade that afterwards, but let's go ahead and adopt it first. So we'll click adopt, 
and now you can see it is adopting and here over in the status it's now shifted that one to the top because it's the most active one and it's showing a status of provisioning so what that means is it's actually loading in all of the details from the rest of our network setup so it's probably going to tell it about the Wi-Fi access point and the clients that are connected to that and all of those pieces as well um, and in a couple of seconds here we'll just go ahead and click the refresh and see okay well now we can see that it's actually connected so now we can say okay now we know exactly where this is at and it looks like as part of that it actually just restarted the uh, restarted the switch and here comes the network again so <clears throat> So now that we have that, we can actually click on it. And now over here in the right window, we can see that uh, we're connected and we can see the status of each of the ports. Um, and this one obviously is showing that it has the PoE on and it tells us exactly how much power we're using. So we're using 3.87 watts to power the Cisco phone, uh, which is really nice. And it's on port five and how much data we have sent the TX and how much we've received the RX and uh, so far not a whole lot since it's been plugged in and uh, it's in 100 meg 1 10 100 mode and the port to the left is in gigabit mode which is great so we got two ports that are gigabit mode <coughs> and actually port 4 this is actually our uplink to the uh, firewall so we I think we can set that somewhere This is set to the uplink, I think. There we go. Okay, yes, yeah, so now this is the uplink. So now it knows which port is the correct uplink. So now we can go back to details here. And now we can say, okay, now this is the uplink. So now we'll get some more accurate um, pieces in the puzzle. And we can set downlinks if we had another switch below it. And in this case, we do. We have one downlink, which is the, the access port point, uh, which is the Unify AP. And uh, now we can see also that the uplink is in uh, speed 1000 and full duplex mode, which is definitely what we want for an uplink. And this should give us an aggregate of all of the traffic inside of our network that's going to be going outside. Uh, instead of between each other. So anything that's going towards the internet, this should give us a really great calculation of how much of that data is going out. So really nice to have that. Okay, we can put that back in the side. And let's go out here to the dashboard while we're waiting for that to provision. And we'll start seeing some more things connected. So now we have WLAN and LAN connected here. So if we had a Ubiquiti security device, uh, one of their routers, we would also have WAN visibility and we'd be able to see these throughput and latency items as well. So that would be really handy to have if we wanted to gain that extra insight somewhere here. So you can see Un Unify Security Gateway is required to enable the historical latency and throughput charts. So if you know you wanted to see that you were having some troubles with your ISP, you know, um, which is typical with, let's say, ours, Comcast, um, we could go through here and we could see the historical latency and throughput on that and provide that chart to the ISP so that they could go through and actually correct that problem. Okay, and it looks like we have some nine clients. So we can click on that and we can see exactly what we have. We have a whole bunch of different things here. So we have pieces that are plugged directly into the switch. We have uh, an iPad, an Android device, IPC, whatever that one is, I don't remember what this is, something else. Uh, but anyway, we can kind of start to see now some activity. And like I said, this has only been up a few minutes, so it, it hasn't collected a lot of data. But if we come back to this later, uh, we'll see a whole lot of activity and we can drill down into that user and see you know, a little bit more about what they're doing. So it's showing that the DPI is not available. So uh, I think that that's required, it requires a security device if I remember correctly from what I read. So we wouldn't be able to see that necessarily here, but not a big deal. So we can close those pieces over there 
and uh, we can basically start seeing users and guests or all in one central place. We can go see, see some statistics and we can kind of see uh, you know what's the most active access point what's the most active client um, and who has the longest connection and then how much traffic are we putting through so it shows uh, on the Wi-Fi side we're, we're doing uh, 1.16 megabytes with five clients behind it so lots of data that you can get from this this device um, and from each of the ports themselves as well so we can actually see you know on a port by port basis what's the you know received and transmitted transmission rates that each client is actually doing so we can get a really quick idea of who is our traffic hog I think that pretty much covers everything uh, for this particular video thanks so much for watching if you haven't already make sure you subscribe below and if you have any questions about any of this feel free to give us a call or look us up on the internet, www.informait.com. Thanks again.